Emmett, co-writer of the documentary film about Italy, Girlfriend in a Coma, about a longer a decline in social and economic terms for Italy. You're also, of course, former editor of The Economist. You've been watching Silvio Berlusconi for a long time. Do you think this is it? No bounce back from this? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, Silvio Berlusconi has had more comebacks than Frank Sinatra. He's got a, th a, a skin. You can never quite write him off. You can never write him off, and particularly with a humiliation like this, which it is, as Alan Johnson said, a humiliation for him. Don't forget, he's got a thicker skin than a rhinoceros. He can take humiliation. But the law is against him. I mean, Alan's talking about his possible expulsion from the Senate. And his... I think he will be expelled from the Senate now. He's... he's not going to uh, deal with that, and he's going to go in, into house arrest for a year. But he's still one of Italy's richest men. He's got three TV channels. So he can try to make a comeback. But there's a lot to play for now. The big thing that happened behind the scenes here is that he was deserted by the Catholic Church. A lot of the people who split from him within his own party were diehard Catholics, and the Catholic Church seems to be de deserting him. Now the big question is, can others split his party further and take it from him? From my dead body, he will say. And by the way, I've got quite a while to live, even though I'm 77 years old. Does, uh, do for, if forces like the Catholic Church are leaving Berlusconi, does that necessarily mean they're embracing the reforms that Enrico Letta is about? Well, I think that's a very good question. The answer is no, not yet. This is a very unstable government. Enrico Letta's a very good man, he's got all the right ideas, but he's got a government of but it's incompatibles. Pain, isn't it? It's not popular with voters. Ever. It's never going to be popular with voters. It's such an a government of uh, incompatibles that they all think there might be an election at any moment, which means they're not willing to, to inflict pain because they don't want to be blamed for it. So I don't think the prospects of reform have improved a lot. They're a bit better than yesterday, but they're not a lot better. And now you also have the situation where, of course, the markets are watching. You know, what happens in the Itali Italian economy really matters. And next year, Italy is president of the European Union. So it's not, it's not purely an internal matter. There are always shockwaves across Europe. Well, look, all across Europe, there's a sort of race between the reforms, the fiscal austerity, the things that need to be done to mend the euro, and whether national politics plays ball with that, or whether it loses patience. An event like this keeps Italian politics together, but it's also a temptation. Silvio Berlusconi, one tactic he might do is to say, right, we're going against the euro. Just as the other maverick in Italian politics, the comedian. And that comedian. Could be a very popular populist move, because exactly. the euro can be seen as the source of all ills. You can easily play it that way. Exactly. So that it's still a tinderbox. It's still a very explosive situation, because Italy is uh, Europe's third biggest economy, and it's the biggest debtor. So, and it's in a, in a very bad recession. So I don't think that this is light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a better day for Italian politics than it looked like it was going to be uh, 24 hours ago. Well, we'll leave it on that note of relative optimism. Bill Evans, thank you very much.